Welcome to our online novena at St. Patrick's Church Hill for Wednesday the 2nd of September. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Let's begin by praying together the Hail Holy Queen. Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, hail our life, our sweetness and our hope. To you do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us. And after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of your womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. We live in uncertain times, and it's at times like this that we can rely on Mary's powerful intercession. She is our mother of perpetual help. So let's begin by calling to mind what it is that troubles, it, it troubles us most at this present time. And in silent prayer, Ask Mary to intercede for us. If you have a copy of the Novena booklet, we're on page 16 and we'll join in praying prayer A there, page 16. Let us now pray for all the intentions of the Novena, remembering that Mary is praying with us. Lord Jesus Christ, you came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. You have given us your mother Mary to be our spiritual mother ready to help us. Grant, we ask you, that we who implore her intercession may receive not only the life-giving graces we ask for, but the fullness of life in eternity, where you live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. We now move to page 19 to the Litany of the Way. Let us call upon Mary, the faithful disciple, to pray for us that we may follow Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. And again, we'll use responses set A on page 19. That we may love God above all things and do his will every day. That we may be more aware of the need for periods of prayerful silence in our lives. That we may come to Jesus for help when we are heavily burdened. That we may be faithful till death in our loyalty to Christ. That parents may accept children lovingly from God and guide them in the way of Christ that we may continue Jesus' mission and work for social justice in our world, that we may see Jesus in the poor, the downtrodden and the rejected, that we may conscientiously fulfil our civic responsibilities for all who hold authority in the church, that they may exercise it in a spirit of loving service. On page 23, we pray the prayer at the end of the litany. Mary, our loving mother, you have been called and truly are the perfect Christian, the ideal disciple of the Lord. We praise and thank God for giving you to us as our model in following Jesus. Pray for us that by imitating your example, we may grow more like our divine Lord. Help us to become the kind of Christians 
he is calling us to be in our country today. Mary, help of Christians, pray for us. Our scripture passage today comes from Luke's Gospel, chapter 1. Mary set out and went as quickly as she could to a town in the hill country of Judah. She went into Zechariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. Now as soon as Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. She gave a loud cry and said, Of all women, you are the most blessed, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Why should I be honoured with a visit from the mother of my Lord? From the moment your greeting reached my ears, the child in my womb leapt for joy. Yes, blessed is she who believed that the promise made her by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit exults in God my Saviour, because he has looked upon his lowly handmaid. Yes, from this day forward, all generations will call me blessed, for the Almighty has done great things for me. Holy is his name, and his mercy reaches from age to age for those who fear him. He has shown the power of his arm. He has routed the proud of heart. He has pulled down princes from their thrones and exalted the lowly. The hungry he has filled with good things. The rich sent empty away. He has come to the help of Israel, his servant, mindful of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors of his mercy to Abraham and his descendants forever. Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months and then went back home. The Gospel of the Lord. Blessed is she who believed that the promise made her by the Lord would be fulfilled. I wonder if we can recall who spoke those words and the circumstances in which they were spoken. Blessed is she who believed that the promise made her by the Lord would be fulfilled. Most of us, I'm sure, would recognise the speaker as Mary's cousin Elizabeth, and the circumstances, the context of Elizabeth saying those words as Mary's visit to Elizabeth, just prior to Elizabeth giving birth, the event we call the visitation. Blessed is she who believed that the promise made her by the Lord would be fulfilled. And I guess When we hear those words, we think, okay, well, this promise that Elizabeth is talking about, that's the promise that the angel Gabriel made to Mary, that she was to be the mother of the Saviour. And Elizabeth is praising Mary for her faith in God's promise to her that she is to be the mother of the Saviour. And if we thought that, we'd be right. But Elizabeth wasn't referring only to that promise of the angel Gabriel because she would have had in mind also the promise that God had made to his chosen people over many centuries. Mary belonged to a people who believed that their God was a faithful God, a God who planned great things for his people. And so the Jewish people waited over centuries in anticipation and longing for the promise made them by the Lord to be fulfilled. And in Luke's Gospel, that expectation and longing of the entire Jewish nation is summed up and symbolised in the persons of old Simeon 
and Anna the prophetess, who came regularly to the temple in Jerusalem and prayed that they would live to see the Messiah and live to see the great things that God had in store for his people. And it was Mary who was asked to trust and to believe that after centuries of waiting, the time had finally come. Mary who was asked to believe in the contradiction that she could be both virgin and mother. And Mary said, yes, yes, I believe in the promise of God to his people over many centuries. And yes, I believe that that promise is going to be fulfilled through me. And Mary sang the prayer of praise we call the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit exults in God my Saviour, because he has looked upon his lowly handmaid. So Mary is for us a great model of faith and trust in God's promises. She is the woman of faith who invites us to turn to her and like her, to put our faith in the God who promises to do great things for each one of us. Let's turn now to page 25 in our Novena booklets and we'll join there in praying the prayer for peace. O Mary, Mother of Peace, intercede for us to become peacemakers in our troubled world of today. In a spirit of love, enable us to grow to, to pray continually for peace and to act fairly and justly in our treatment of others. Pray for us as we strive to bring harmony and forgiveness to our families and to our brothers and sisters with whom we live and work. Pray with us, Mary, that the leaders of our nation and of all nations may seek peace and justice in all that they do. Grant that together with them we may work more effectively to bring about the peace of Christ in our country and in the world. Plead for all who are struggling, suffering and dying to bring about a true and lasting peace. Amen. Let's now pray for the intentions of our Holy Father, Pope Francis. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let's conclude our novena with a final prayer. Loving God, we pray through the intercession of Mary, Mother of Mercy, and Mother of Perpetual Help, for all those afflicted by the coronavirus, that everyone we know, that everyone may know your love and protection. We pray especially for our senior and vulnerable brothers and sisters at this time. May all know your special protection and care for them. May we all experience your healing and protective grace in all that is happening in our troubled world. We make this prayer through the intercession of Mary, the first and most perfect disciple of Jesus. Mary, Mother of perpetual help, pray for us. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit come upon us and remain with us forever. 
Thank you for joining us for our online novena from St. Patrick's.